Welcome back. This is Sandy with Sandy's Organized Chaos, and today we're going to be doing this beach split tumbler. As always, I'll make sure to put everything that I use today into the description box below, so that way you guys can shop those items if you would like to. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and let's wake up, prep these tumblers, and slay all day. Let's do this. So the style of tumbler that I'm using today is a 30 ounce regular curved tumbler that I purchased through the Stainless Depot company. I went ahead and I prepped and primed my tumbler. Now the color that I chose was this rustic pink. I thought it would go really well with that sand color that we're going to be doing on one half of this tumbler. Now when I'm doing split tumblers and I know I'm going to be using tape, I like to spray up my tumblers the night before so that way that paint has enough time to adhere properly to our tumbler and it won't peel off once we go to peel back our tape. So typically I would just take my tape and kind of eyeball where the middle of the tumbler is, but I found this nifty little hack where you just take the bottom of the tumbler that you're using, you trace it onto a piece of paper there, you just cut it out, and I actually like to put the type of tumbler I'm using on there as well, so I'll just write 30 ounce regular on there so that way I know it was for this particular kind of tumbler. I'm just gonna fold that right in half and we have a little template that's gonna show us exactly where the center of our tumbler is. So now I'm just gonna lay that down. I'm just gonna use my pencil and just do a line straight across. Now just to make sure that my tape is going to be straight down the sides, I am just gonna take my soft tape measure that I use here, it's used for fabric, and I'm just gonna make a mark at the very bottom. Or you could use a ruler as well to kind of make sure that your lines are as straight as possible. So not only do I let my tumbler set overnight just to make sure that paint is nice and cured onto the tumbler, but I also like to take my tape before I place it on onto the tumbler and I'll just take it and kind of run it across a piece of fabric. I usually do it on my shirt, but I wanted you guys to be able to see it. So <laughs> I'm just using this, I think it's like three inch painter's tape. It just covers really well. And all we're gonna do is just follow our guidelines and tape off half of our tumbler. But after we spray paint and you go to peel the back of that tape, there should be no peeling of any of that paint that we, we've done already since we made all these extra precautions. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and finish covering this up and we're gonna move outside to start spray painting our water side. So one side will be sand and the other side's gonna be the water, making it that split. So I'm gonna be using three different colors. I'm gonna be using this lighter blue, which is called seaside, this medium blue, which is called ink blue. It's like, almost like a royal blue, and then a super dark blue called evening navy. And I also have a glove as well to go over my hands so I don't get spray paint all over me. And of course, the first thing we wanna do is go ahead and prime up our paint cans. You wanna shake them up really good. You wanna give them a couple spritzes just to make sure they're working properly before we get moving. So I went online and I just looked at some photos of the ocean and, you, you know, more towards the shoreline. It's a lighter blue and then the deeper you go out into the ocean, it's going to become darker. So that's how we're going to think of this. We're going to take our light blue because this is going to be the closest to our quote unquote shoreline. And we are just going to go right around the, the edge of that tape right there, right along with the light blue. The next we are going to take that medium blue, which is kind of like this royal blue, and we're just going to go right again, right next to that lighter blue, just making a couple spritzes, making sure I get the bottom a little bit as well, because we are starting to go into deeper waters. So the darkest point right there in the middle is going to be the deepest part of our ocean side. Then after that, we're gonna come through with that navy and just really spritz that on there, kind of fill in all that in, just making it nice and dark so that way it gives us a really nice variation of color. But that was super simple, right? Now, all I wanted to do was just add a little bit more because you will be able to see this underneath our glitter because our glitter is semi-transparent. So I decided to come through and add some speckles of that dark navy. And I also came back through one last time with the lighter blue, the lighter seaside blue and did the same thing, just giving it a couple more speckles. And I really like how that paint turned out. It looks really neat with the different depths of colors. And I, I really think that's gonna look nice under our glitter. So the next thing I do is I go ahead and pull my tape right away you know it's just something I've always done you can let the tape set until it's ready to be peeled off after it's dry but I like to do it right away I'm going to set that off to the side to dry and then we'll start glittering all right so the glitters I'm going to be using today are two fines and two chunkies for the water the first one we're going to be using is sapphire the second is called ice now onto the chunkies this is called judy blue and then my second one here is called you got this 
Now for the beach sand side, I'm gonna be using a mix of kind of like a smaller, medium chunky. This is called Believe. It's a beautiful gold opal mix along with Agenda over top of that. All right, we have our station all set up here. We have our glitters ready to go. I have my epoxy ready to be applied to my tumbler as well because I'm gonna be using the epoxy method to apply my glitter today. So I have about five mLs mixed up there, but I'm not gonna use all that. I am gonna try to apply just a little bit more on my blue side because we are applying chunkies on that side just so that way my glitter has enough room to kind of shift around and lay flat after everything's all said and done. So I'm gonna go ahead and stretch my epoxy on here and then we'll start laying that glitter. And something I forgot to mention is I am using a fast set epoxy so that way it cures faster for me so we can move along a little bit quicker. Now I'm going to do the water side first and we're going to do the chunkies from the water side first as well. And in keeping with the theme like we did with our paints, we are going to use that lightest blue first, which again that was called Judy Blue. And we're just going to sprinkle that right along where our shoreline is and completely around all the way over to the other side. Now you're going to notice that it does kind of dip into that sand side and that's perfectly fine. That's what you want. You want it to kind of have just a little bit over onto the other side. And besides that, once we add our waves, everything's just going to blend very well together. So don't even worry about some glitters getting over onto the sand side. And you may also notice I'm not fully filling it in. I'm just kind of sprinkling that in because we're going to take our fine glitters and kind of fill in the rest of it after we do this portion. So right into the center, we're going to take our darker blue, which is called You Got This, and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to sprinkle that around until we kind of get that filled in. And this is what I have so far. So this is what we're going with so far. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to our fine glitters. I'm gonna start with, again, with my lightest blue. This is called Ice. And I'm just gonna go right along my edge here. Now again, this is a semi-translucent, so those paints will kind of poke through and everything will just kind of start to melt together. And again, we're just going right along the edge and kind of letting it melt into that other side as well. Because once we start to add our sand side, it's all just kind of blend together. So I'm just gonna shake that on there just like that, all the way up onto the bottom as well. Now I'm gonna come through with my sapphire and we're gonna do the same exact thing. Now the sapphire isn't a semi-translucent, this is a metallic, so you can't see through it at all. So I'm just gonna make sure that I keep it kind of concentrated right in that center there. I'm just gonna shake it straight down the center, and then I'm just going to let it cascade just slightly off to each side, just kind of giving it a really nice ombre effect. And there we go, we have our water all filled in here. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the sand portion of this beach split. So I knew I wanted the, beat, the sand side to have a little bit of gold in it, but not fully filled with gold. So I'm just gonna take my little mini uh, gold cuts here. This is called Believe, and I'm just gonna sprinkle this around. I'm not gonna fully fill it in. I just want it peeking through our fine glitter that we're gonna be laying over top of that. So that's about what, how much I have put down. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the fine cut. And again, this is called Agenda, and this is a semi-translucent, so it's really gonna pick up those colors that are on the tumbler itself, that pinkish tan color on the bottom, and it's gonna give it a very beautiful sand look under there. And as you see, I'm actually even shaking it over into the water side as well, just making sure everything blends up really good. Now, after I applied that, this is what it looks like so far. So you can see a little bit of that gold just poking through. Our shoreline is very well blended with each other. This is pretty much how it should be looking. So before I go let it cure, I'm gonna get, take my gloved hand, that was my opposite hand holding my tumbler there. I'm gonna go ahead and take my gloved hand. I'm gonna press all those chunky glitters down. I'm not worried about the sand side of my tumbler. I am more worried about the chunky side there. So I'm just gonna make sure that everything is nice and flat. I'm gonna set that off to the side and let that cure. It was about three hours since we used our quick set epoxy before we go ahead and apply our epoxy over top of our raw glitter. All right, this is all cured and ready to go and have our first coating of epoxy applied. I'm gonna go ahead and sweep off any extra little glitters. It's just really gonna help out so that way we don't get extra little glitters where they shouldn't be. I'm gonna go ahead and go outside and give it two coats of semi-gloss clear. It just helps out again with shifting of glitters and any type of fish eyes that might occur from the epoxy wicking away off of our glitters. I'm gonna go ahead and apply 30 mLs of epoxy over top of my raw glitter here. And again, I'm pretty much using Fast Set this entire tumbler, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that onto my turner. I'm gonna hit it up really good with my blowtorch, 
And then I'm gonna let that cure for about three hours and we'll move on to the next portion. All right, it's been three hours now and we are ready to go ahead and start sanding this down. Now, because we did such a really good coating over top of our glitter and we pressed everything down and all that, there really isn't too much we gotta do. We just gotta make sure we come through and clean up our rim really well and make sure the bottom is not too lumpy. So I'm taking my 100 grit sandpaper. I do a cross between 100 grit and 80 grit. So I'm gonna start with my 100 grit and then I'm gonna work my way down to my 80 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna give that a good rinse and we'll start building our first set of waves. All right, our tumbler is all sanded and washed and ready to go. I have 30 mLs of quick set epo epoxy, there we go, into my little cup here. I also have my white Blanco Blanco and I have my nifty little blow dryer here that I'm going to be using. Now we have to keep in mind we're using fast set. The reason why I'm using fast set is because once we start those waves, our waves will pretty much be set and we don't have to worry about them kind of moving around after we're all, it's all said and done. We want it to stay on one side of our tumbler, not scoot over to the other side. So we want it to stay on the water side. So we have about 10 minutes to work with this before it starts to get a little too goopy. <laughs> so I'm gonna take that 30 mLs and I'm gonna apply everything except five, about five mLs of it. So you're gonna apply all that epoxy onto your tumbler and this is gonna give us plenty of room to be able to do our waves. It's gonna give us a nice, nice surface to be able to get everything shifted around and moving it for us. So as soon as I get that epoxy applied, I'm gonna stick it right onto my little turner there. And again, I also want you guys to keep in mind, I am working on a 30 ounce tumbler. So if you're working on something smaller or bigger, you're going to need to adjust your measurements from there as well. Now, before we start on our waves, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it up with my blow, my blow torch now because I don't like to do it once I start adding alcohol inks. I just, I'm always afraid I'm gonna set it on fire, which you could. So <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Now into that extra epoxy we kept in our cup, I'm gonna go ahead and add my white alcohol ink. I think I did about seven drops of it right into my epoxy there. But I just wanted to make sure that it had a nice saturated white color so that way it didn't look too translucent once we applied it to the tumbler. So that's about what it should look like for you guys. Now we're going to apply our lines and we're going to just do it right along each shoreline here. We're going to do two lines. We're going to do one right next to the shoreline and then one kind of right behind it as well. So just a quick recap, we did 30 mLs of our quick set. We went ahead and applied all of that to our tumbler except for five mLs. We went ahead and put it onto our turner, hit it up with our blowtorch to get any little micro bubbles. And now we took our extra little bit of epoxy that we had left on hand. We put about seven drops of our white alcohol ink into it. And now we are just making these two lines right off of one another, right where the shoreline is. All right, so now that that is applied, we're gonna go ahead and start taking our blow dryer and start blowing this around to give us that effect of waves. So as I get going here, you're gonna notice that I'm gonna be taking my blow dryer and I'm gonna make sure that when I blow it, it's, I'm gonna be blowing the white back up onto the blue portion. I don't want to just straight on blow onto it. I want to kind of roll with that blue area to make sure that our white stays inside that blue. So this is an example of what I'm talking about. I'm gonna stop it right there. I'm gonna take my blow dryer and start pushing that around. You see how it's starting to roll around the tumbler there. Now this is just getting that side started. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and get it rolling one more time. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the opposite side here. Now I see how it's starting to run there on that side. I'm not worried about that because this is just our first set of waves. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my blow dryer and just push it all back up onto the blue area there. And again, this is why I like working with fast set for this because pretty much once I, I blew it back around onto the blue, it pretty much stayed where I, where I blew it. And I'm also doing the bottom as well. I did put a little bit along the bottom as well to make sure that it completely wrapped around and gave us that look. So now I'm just gonna kind of come through. I'm gonna decide if I want to move any more of the, I really like that side right there. So I don't wanna touch that anymore. So, and I do know I need to come through and clean up that really quick before it starts to set any more on me. So I'm just gonna take my stick and just kind of clean it up. But our second set of waves is just gonna cover all that up anyways. So now I'm gonna come through and go one more time with my hair dryer right up along the other side. So I'm gonna get that rolling. I'm gonna stop it. And then I'm just going to take my blow dryer and do this side one last time. And that is it. 
I'm going to completely walk away. I'm just going to get these going. See how I'm pushing it? They're going to roll just a little bit slightly back. And again, that fat set epoxy is already starting to kind of set up. So everything is going to pretty much stay exactly where we left it. And that's it. I'm going to walk away. I'm not going to touch it anymore. All in all, this took me about between five to 10 minutes to do completely, to do my waves and everything, only because I was kind of fussing with a little bit of that shoreline. But again, you won't even be able to see that once those second that second set of waves goes on. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to let that cure. And we're gonna go ahead and get our decal going. All right, we're in my Cricut design space here. And the hardest part with coming up with this was the fonts. I mean, I knew I wanted summer state of mind, which you could use all kinds of different things to go with state of mind. You could use sunshine state of mind, like all kinds of stuff. But I knew I wanted summer, but I think it's the fonts that's the hardest part <laughs> whenever you go to make up your own thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and scoot that off to the side. And I'm gonna show you how I did this. Now the fonts that I'm using are right off of my Cricut Design Space. I pay a monthly fee, so I get certain fonts, but if you don't have that, then you just want something pretty swirly for the top and then something more thinner, kind of blocky for the words for the bottom. Now for summer, I used the font called Merlot. Again, I'll put this into the description box for you guys as well. And I had that typed up. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ungroup it, which is up in the upper right-hand corner there, because I wanna go ahead and finish or fix this S here. I just want it a little bit closer. So I'm gonna go ahead and scoot that a little bit closer to the rest of my words here. Now, after I have that all figured out, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight everything. And I'm going to weld everything together, which is in the lower right-hand corner of the Cricut Design Space. The reason why we weld everything together is so that way once it cuts on the machine, it will all be seamless and there won't be any extra little cuts where there shouldn't be. So now we have the top portion done. Super easy, right? Now we're going to go ahead and do the bottom portion. So for state of mind, again, I'm going to be using a font that's just right in with our Cricut Design Space fonts. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get that typed up. Now I knew I wanted something just thin and just very simple. So we have our nice swirly summer portion at the top and then I just wanted to keep it simple at the bottom. So I ended up using what's that called BFC American Bread. <laughs> so that's what I used for the bottom portion. Now this next step is just aesthetically pleasing to you you know how big do you want um, each thing to be I liked how summer was bigger than the state of mind so I'm just gonna go ahead and lock everything and just kind of kind of bring everything down to the size that I would like so I'm just gonna make sure that summer stays a little bit bigger than state of mind and then I'm gonna go ahead and do up my measurements to fit completely across my tumbler as well so I'm just going to highlight everything and see how big it's going to be once I go to layer it up. And then we just want to adjust everything from there. Obviously, it's not going to be uh, 10 inches. I think it was 7 inches in the length and about 3 inches in the width of everything once I got everything all cut out. Now, the summer portion is going to be a gold vinyl. And the state of mind is going to be a black vinyl. So you may have to cut that separately out on its own because the gold vinyl needs to be cut on a separate... Uh, setting. Now when I go to layer these vinyls, you know, the state of mind on top of summer, I actually keep it up on my screen here because everything's already where it should be. And I see that the T and state is right at the top of the S there. And I'm going to use that once I go to layer everything on so that way I know exactly where that portion needs to go once I layer it. All right, everything is all cut and weeded, and now we're gonna go ahead and start layering this up. I'm gonna go ahead and, and cut off any extra paper backing that I don't need just so I can line it up on my mat here. I'm gonna line that T up on the S. I keep going to my computer to check it. There's, there's my head there. <laughs> and I'm just gonna go ahead and burnish all that down, and then we're gonna go ahead and get it applied to our tumbler. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find the middle of our uh, sand side here. So I'm just gonna use a measuring tape, figure out about where the middle is, and I'm gonna use my lid to my advantage. I'm gonna take that lid and just get it where it needs to be. There, there's usually a little seam straight down the middle, which is very helpful as well. So I'm just gonna get that adjusted, push it down, and then we'll start applying that. Now, before I start applying, I'm actually going to come through and make some cuts. I'm just going to cut off anything I don't need so that way it's not my way. And then I'm going to come through right in between of, on each side, I'm going to make some slits. And that's really going to help us once we go to apply it down across that curve of our tumbler. So I'm going to pull the backing off. I'm going to go ahead and get it lined up. About the middle is right at the top of... Uh, state of mind. That's about where the middle of my decal is. So I'm just going to try to line that up the best that I can with my lid there. 
I'm just going to verify that by rolling it back and forth just to make sure that it looks about right. And then all I'm going to do is do the top portion first. I'm going to lay, I'm going to make sure that I don't do state of mind yet. I'm going to lay summer completely down. I'm going to burnish that down. And then I'm just going to make the, take those tabs that we made from making the slits and just pull it straight down. And this again will verify that everything is nice and straight on our tumbler and perfectly centered. All right, now it is time to finish this lady up. We need our second set of waves to really just give us that extra beach look that we're going after here. So, so that way, not only you guys can see a little bit better, so I'm not holding on to it, but it, it helps out too, so I don't accidentally touch the waves once I apply them. I put it onto my turner to be able to apply it that way. So to make my waves, I'm going to be using Aileen's Glitter Snow, and I have a size 8 round brush that I'm going to be using. I'm just going to take a dollop of our Glitter Snow here, and I'm going to start making C shapes. Now I've done this look before on a different tutorial, if you guys remember that, we are basically doing the same exact concept. We're going to kind of sculpt and mold our own waves out of this fake snow. So after I have my first C complete, I'm just gonna take that and pull straight back. I'm gonna do a couple of these kind of far away right now, but I am gonna pull you guys down a little bit closer so you can see a little bit better. And just like how we did our first set of waves, I'm gonna be doing two layers of this. So my first set of waves, as you see, are kind of far out onto the shoreline. That's just because I wanted to give it more of a dramatic look. And if you see as I'm going and as I'm pulling back, I'm going right over top of the previous wave that I did before because you want that layered look. It's really going to look like those waves are crashing right onto our shoreline. So we're just making these elongated C shapes, tapping it down, and then we're going to come through with our brush and just pull straight back. And it's going to give that, that illusion of our waves. So I'm going to bring the camera down just a little bit closer so you can see. It is extremely simple. It doesn't have to be perfect because waves aren't perfect. You're just dabbling right onto the tip there. And then you're gonna take your brush and you're just gonna go pull straight back, just like that. That's all you wanna do, extremely simple. But another reason why I kind of dabbled around at the top is also to make sure that there's not large chunks of this fake snow built up because we don't want it too chunky. We just kind of want a thin layer and I, and I really like how it is very opaque at the top. So the tip of it is very, you know, white, and then it pulls back into that kind of translucent look to give us more of that look of the water. So now we're just gonna go ahead and do up our second layer. And again, we're gonna move right into it. We're not gonna worry about if it's dry or not yet. And we're gonna start making more of these just half elongated C shapes. And again, they don't have to be exactly C shapes either. They can be like little mountain shapes or anything like that. Because if you, if you take a picture of waves, all of them kind of break differently. Now, as I go along, I'm gonna go ahead and do the bottom up as well. And I'm just going to kind of attach it to the other side so that way it kind of flows all the way around and kind of connects all the way around. And I'm gonna do the same exact thing on the bottom. I'm gonna make about two waves for my first layer and then again on the bottom right underneath it right where our split begins I'm going to do another set of little waves. I'm going to flip it and do the same exact thing on the opposite side. Now I was trying to think of it as if you were looking at the decal I just wanted kind of the aura of the waves so you could kind of see it like what's that you know up up on the top and the bottom of our decal so that's why I really wanted to make sure I, I got these dramatic first set of layer waves and they're kind of closer to the decal and then just taking that second set and going more in where the split actually is. And this really didn't take me that long at all. This only took me about 10 minutes to do these waves because it is just extremely simple, just making those C shapes, pulling back. And now let's take a look and see. That's exactly what I wanted. I just wanted a little bit of that breakage be, to be able to be seen once you're looking at the decal. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. Now I'm just gonna stick that off to the side and I let it dry for about an hour. It really doesn't take that long to dry. Once it is dry, I actually take my hand and I'm just gonna knock down any kind of points. It almost gives it like a little bit of a sanding as it is because you don't want any big, huge points on there. So I'm just gonna take my hand, rub it around, and then I gave it a nice coating of my semi-gloss here just to make sure everything was nice and sealed in because we did use metallic vinyl. I have another 30 mLs of my facet epoxy that I'm gonna mix up. I'm gonna apply that to my tumbler. I'm gonna hit it up really good with my torch, obviously, and I'm gonna let that cure. 
Now you guys always know I like to do two uh, coatings of epoxy for my finishing coats. So before I do my second coat of epoxy, I will come through with my 80 grit sandpaper and just kind of knock down anything along that shoreline that might be kind of poking up. You're not gonna hurt it and you're not even gonna be able to see it. I'm just gonna knock that down a little bit. And for the very final coat, I'm not gonna do a full 30 mLs. I'm only gonna do about 20 mLs for it because I didn't want it too thick. I'm gonna let that cure and it is good to go. Whether you take this design and duplicate it as is, or you take it and let it inspire you to create something that is completely your own, I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching this tutorial today. Again, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.